Oh, I'm Terry Phillips again. I promise a few of y'all how I did I, how I set this thing up on this uh, steam engine. Um, it's relatively simple. You basically, you just tear your weed eater apart that is old. I wouldn't recommend taking one apart that's been burned up because you didn't have enough oil in your gas. But anyhow, uh, like this one over here, for instance, it's been burned up. This one here, it was still running when I tore it apart, but it was too little for what I needed it for. I got too much weed eating to do around here. So, anyhow, it no effort. It takes off pretty much on its own. It builds pressure, and it gets faster. So let's get started. You're going to need some gloves if you're going to play with steam because it doesn't feel very well when it touches your skin. Alright, that was a good demonstration of a lot of steam. Let's turn the old flame down just a little bit. So we don't blow ourselves up while we're doing it. <laughs> Push rod. Notice how long it is. Uh, basically about four inches long. Oh, excuse me. Maybe it's three inches long compared to with a two and a half inch long screw. Okay. I don't know if you're going to see this or not. Keep checking your pressure. But there is a Teflon ball inside this. And the bottom of the ball is about right there at that ring. So what you got to do you know, when you got all this stuff screwed together, remember your, your height and screws or threads determines how long you're going to need this thing. You know how long that is? Get your piston to the top most center point and you measure that and that is the same thing all you want it to do every time it makes a revolution that the piston pushing this push rod barely touches that ball to release the steam um, you can get these these check valves most anywhere. It, well, so I'd say most any pipe place should have them. Um, but to show you how, what's going on here, I don't know if you can see that, but there is not much room inside that quarter inch nipple of this rod that I'm using. I don't know if that makes a difference. I've tried nails, which work uh, just about anything. Um, but anyhow, just imagine you was on a bicycle, which I'm using a bicycle wheel here, and you just start pushing down 
pedaling. No effort at all, unless she was going up a hill. But anyway, that's how it all works. Safety glasses is a good thing. All I like to do before I get started, you need to get all steam will turn back, will condensate back into liquid. So it's good to get all the water out, and yeah, that's that's pretty warm. And we'll get our water back up to par, our steam back up to par relatively. It's sitting around. 15, 16 PSI. You gotta get all the water. This condensing right here will slow you down. Right here. It will slow you down in the check valve. Get the pressure back up. It's not the same gauge I was using before, but I had a little mishap, and that tends to happen <laughs> when you're playing with steam and fire, and you forget about what you're doing, and you walk away from your project. Don't never do that. Always keep an eye on your your stuff until you got it completely figured out. But you noticed, let's stand back here a little bit. Don't mind all the junk, because when you're doing projects, you will have junk laying everywhere. She's going to continue to pick up speed. And I noticed one other thing. Your pot, or whatever you're using for a boiler, the fuller you have it, the better off it runs. In our next video, I'll show you how to keep the water supply plentiful so that it will always stay the same. And I didn't know if I told you, but I'm using a three-quarter inch check valve. And most everything here is quarter inch coupled. So, most of your hardware store, stores have about everything you need. Unless you're like me, you go to Lowe's so many times, you buy up what they got, it takes them a while to get their stuff back. 